there some nice drips hello gang are we broadcasting yeah i think we are hello my name's dan and uh back in the saddle again out doing a starting a plein air painting i am in ocracoke that's an island in north carolina and uh let me pick you up for a moment show you what i'm painting so more or less uh that view right there not you know zoomed in a little bit so we have a nice rest waterside restaurant um and we have boats water docks the whole bit so nice 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 great to be out here gorgeous the weather's been unbelievable today like 72 degrees or something like that all day nice little breeze happening right now my umbrella here as long as it, as long as you don't get too much of a breeze um this is an umbrella specially made for plein air painters um usually it's it's quite impractical unless you have considerable tie downs which working here on the island without my van full of you know my my van back home is 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 a is an art studio on wheels and, uh, so I, i'm here without a lot of my stuff anyway so it's i don't have major tie down so we'll see the, how long the umbrella will be there it's nice to have it blocking the uh blocking the sun out of my eyes though let's just do a few a few lines just for fun there <laughs> I call I declare that the abstract underpainting is finished <laughs> we don't want to spend a lot of time on that thing no, let's get in get her done and get out all right major shapes I'm thinking uh, dock steps right there there are a couple of, of things. Of course, people people like water. People, human beings like to see paintings of water. So that's good. So I, I want to capture some water. Um, human beings like boats. So we're, we're in good good shape there. Got some big beautiful yachts right here. Oops. That's a little high. And uh, people like umbrellas, like restaurant patio umbrellas, because of course that carries the connotation of good times, right? Sitting under a patio umbrella, enjoying a glass of wine or sweet tea, whichever poison you prefer. Umbrellas are a nice, a nice symbol. So this this painting is is full of nice nice symbols here's just the corner the edge of the building here rocks down here the rocks are nice all right drawing number one is finished let's go right ahead and do drawing number two I'm gonna pick a slightly smaller brush this is what I did, one of the ones, one of the brushes I used a moment ago. Let's do two. I'm, I'm using, I'm out here with my um, Soltec easel. Pretty, pretty popular easel. Plain air, plain air easel. Um, I've, I've heard that there are frequent complaints about their dependability. I've heard that, but frankly, I haven't experienced it, so I'm not sure what the gripe is. Um, I bought mine used secondhand from a fellow artist for, for a couple hundred bucks, I think. They're, they're quite expensive. Um, oh, I don't know, six or seven years ago, I suppose. And I, I've been quite, quite happy with it. 
and I don't use it a ton because um, I only use it when I'm really doing real plain air painting. <laughs> and for me, a lot of times when I'm doing a plain air painting, like at a, at a festival or an event or something like that, in downtown, anywhere, um, I'm sort of doing plain air painting, but I'm also doing entertainment. You know, I'm doing live event show-off painting. So I don't, I certainly don't use a, a Soltec easel when I'm at a festival. By the way, just for what it's worth, if, in case anybody ever watches this who wants to get into the wedding painting business, I have one very strong bit of advice because I do see other aspiring beginner wedding painters and uh, frequently they're using a French easel or an easel like this. Any easel where the legs splay out like this, you know, like a tripod, there's many kinds of easels where the legs do that. It's a really bad idea. Um, for at a at a wedding reception <laughs> because it's a major trip hazard and at a wedding I don't know about any wedding you've ever been to but people sometimes drink a little bit too much and get a little tipsy get a little you know not watching where they're going too carefully anyway so you know you want a, a an easel where the the legs go straight up you know straight down so I'm making a number of corrections here in the drawing. The first drawing I did in orange, as you can see. The second one here is in red. It's a, that's a trick I play often. So once you, so do your first drawing. This works in charcoal, graphite, watercolor. Um, oh, watercolor is just a little special case, but that's all right, I won't get into it right now. Um, and acrylics. Anytime you're you're drawing, where you're drawing with a color, or as in the case of charcoal or graphite, you're drawing with a a, a value, lightness and darkness. Do your first drawing with a light-ish color, and then you can do your second or subsequent drawings would be a better term. Do your subsequent drawings with um, a darker color, you know what, like I'm doing right now. See, I did the first drawing in orange, second drawing in red. If I had to do a third drawing which I don't think I will have to do, I mean, in, in color like this, because I think I'm going to be close enough here after this second drawing. Um, I would do a, a third, even darker color, like purple or blue. So uh, the, the magic of the, the, the trick is that after you draw in a darker color, the earlier, lighter drawing disappears. Get it? All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> I've talked about that quite a bit. <sighs> very, very busy subject matter, as I'm assuming you can see or you saw. I'll show it to you again in just a minute, those of you who just joined. I'm standing here beside a, a, a restaurant, a, 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 a a bar, restaurant at the at the pier at the marina. Okay, let me pick it up, pick you up again, and show you again where I'm what I'm looking at. So more or less like that. And my yeah, that's that's pretty close to the framing right there. Maybe down a little bit. Pretty close to that. Nice, eh? Beautiful sky right now, by the way. Which hang on, that reminds me. I need to I need to take another picture. Remember when you show up at a plain air location the sun is going to move so you, you one of the first things you do as a plain air painter is decide on lighting do you like the light that's there right now like I do pretty much like this quite a bit the sky right now is gorgeous now I'm sorry not right now the sun the sun just went behind a cloud so that's not good but the sky is is gorgeous nonetheless so um, that's one of the first things you do as a plain air painter when you as soon as you show up even before your easel is set up you, you grab your phone and take pictures phones are are the most amazing boon do you know that word <laughs> stroke of luck uh, to um, to plain air painters 
because because of the large screen. Right back in the old days, remember cameras? Do you guys remember cameras? <laughs> SLR cameras, big old heavy things, you know, that weighed 12 pounds, hung around your neck. Remember those? Yeah, well, they they weren't not nearly as practical as a cell phone camera because you see the, the cell phone has a, a window this big on it, right? So you can actually see the picture you just took. And so that's what you paint from. Anyway, as soon as you show up, you need to take a picture, unless you're a hardcore, old-fashioned plain air painter, and I don't use photography. Well, okay, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I'm not talking about you. Um, so take a picture right away, because of course the sun, this, as I like to say, silly me, you know, this is one of those days where the sun came up in the east and it's going down in the west. This is one of those days where that's happening. And the sun is going to move a whole bunch while I am out here painting. And so you need to decide. The choices are either, either you um, decide that, no, I like the light the way it is right now. That's perfect. Don't move. In which case, you take a picture. More often, I... Um, I, my, I, I usually paint in the afternoon, evening, later in the day. So uh, very often for me, um, I, I determine that the light is going to look better in one, two, or three hours. So I still will take a picture. But I'll, I'll be painting according to my guess, all right? So again, this is one for those of you who never plain air painted before. Brace yourself. If you're, if you're used to painting from photographs in a studio, I mean, the first time you go out and paint on plain air, you'll be lost as a goose, trust me. Well, maybe you won't. Maybe you're a freaking genius. You won't be like the rest of us. Hang on, go. Let's stabilize my knees a little bit, I hope. Um, I can, whoops, I consider myself rather fortunate today because as soon as I got here, the light was gorgeous. So that means I take pictures and then from that point onward, my job, so to speak, is to just remember what the light looked like and look at my photograph that I've taken. All right, that, that's enough. I beat that thing to death. Let's go back to some drawing here. And uh, once again, the the drawing. This is my third drawing. Then, right? Oh yeah, let's definitely have the top of this boat, the outrigging, whatever you call that, the cab, the cockpit, um, overlap with the uh, umbrella there. This is my third drawing. Oh, and I gotta put people under this umbrella. There's nobody there right now, I don't know why. But certainly I'll put three people there. Some people over here. Lots of people are having a nice time. All right, that's enough of that. And oh, by the way, I am out here again. I'm so sorry. That's part of the hazard of plein air painting. I'm out here once again without my iPad, so I'm so sorry. I am unable to read your chats. It's been a busy day. How busy has it been? Well, let me think. I, I did one, two, three, four, five. 
I've worked on, f started and finished three, and then finished two others, I think, um, paintings, sketch paintings or sketches today. So I've been pretty busy, and that's part of the reason why things happen, like, oh, I forgot to charge up my iPad. So very sorry about that. Come on, gang. Come on, gang. Come on, Soltec Easel. Hang on, hang on. As I've said so often, this, this first layer of white is, is always such a fun, uh, uh, one of my favorite um, phases or stages of the painting process. Actually, the later stages of white are also some of my favorite, but there's just really something about this very first one. It is particularly fun for me. Of course, a, a lot of the red that I put on just a few minutes ago, of course, is still very wet. So my white paint is indeed picking up bits of uh, red and orange paint, creating very interesting uh, colors and textures. All part of the fun. And it's legal as long, so to speak, quote unquote, legal, as long as you don't, um, if, you, if you're emulating, copying, imitating my technique what's in any way whatsoever, the white picking up the, the wet is perfectly legal as long as you don't say, oh, look, I can create like pink. See that pink right there and say, oh, so intentionally sort of um, um, begin painting with pink paint. No, 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 that's, that's, if you will, that's a violation. <laughs> it, it violates this, the, the, the visual, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules really, but to do that would, would, um, violate the effect that you are in fact after if, if you're trying to paint in any way whatsoever, like Dan Nelson, you don't, you don't use the, uh, the mixability to create a, a, an opaque uh, color. Is that, is that making sense? Yeah. I hope it is. Part of the reason I enjoy the, the, the white, the drawing in white paint, is because um, when my eye, when my head lifts up and I look over at this, my subject map, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang, time to take another picture. The sun just came out, it's gorgeous lighting right now, so bear with me just a second. Oops. You know what is shocking? <laughs> Especially when you're my age. What is shocking is, um, when you pick up your camera to take a picture and all of a sudden you see yourself. You say, egads, who is that old guy? 
<laughs> That's what's shocking. <laughs> um, so when I'm drawing with white and I lift up my eyes and look at my subject matter, I'm looking for light things, which is the opposite of our normal impulse. Normally when we're drawing, like, a, like our grade school self, um, we tend to focus on shapes and we outline shapes with dark lines and we tend to look for dark shapes. Quite different from when you lift your eyes and look for light things. So it's a really good trick, by the way. You know, no matter what you're drawing or painting, when you're working on capturing a likeness, uh, one of the tricks you can play, mental tricks you can play to help you capture a better representation, whatever it is you're drawing, including a face, is number one, first pass, focus on the dark stuff. Second pass, second time around, focus on the light stuff. And your eyes will see very different shapes, very different things than you, than you saw the first time around. All right, I'm going to try. I don't know how well this is going to work. I, I didn't bring... Alas, I didn't bring a bottle of um, medium with me. Now, now I wish I had. I had so much stuff I was already carrying to the car. I didn't want to carry any more. Um, so I'm right now. I'm using. Uh, I'm essentially using water as my medium. The problem with that is to make it light enough, pale enough, I have to add so much water to it that it has a tendency, instead of drying in place, it tends to just run away, run, disappear. So that's a real challenge, and that's why normally I carry with me um, a bottle of acrylic medium carry it with me. And of course, painting um, color, like I'm doing right now, transparent color, um, on top of wet white, right? The white is still wet. That, that really creates a problem. So I'm, I'm trying to do every, every one of these strokes that I'm doing, I'm trying to do it in one stroke, not, not come back and touch it a second time. Because if I do touch it a second time, I will just get an explosion of the white, the white paint will come alive and just, it'll be, I'll be painting with opaque, um, Opaque colors. Does that make sense? Opaque, opaque paint. And opaque paint is my enemy. <laughs> my sworn enemy. <laughs> to exaggerate the case ever so slightly. <laughs> yeah, opaque is not our friend. So let me uh, give you a description of, of Dan Nelson's uh, acrylic technique. My underpainting it's going to be an oil painting, of course. Right now, I'm in acrylic. My underpainting is layers of acrylic. Now, right? That's easy. A lot of people go, oh, yeah, I know. You know, so-and-so does that. And the answer is, uh, maybe, maybe, probably not. Okay, because here's the next descriptor. It's layers of transparent acrylic. And that makes all the difference. The transparency. Otherwise, layers of, of acrylic is, is redundant, right? Because if you just use acrylic, like, so to speak, straight out of, the, out of the tube, it's opaque. You put down blue, and you come back and put down red on top of your blue. What color is your painting? The answer is now it's red. Okay, so it's very important distinction that I'm painting in in uh, transparent layers. Very, very critical um, distinction there. And of course I'm painting wet paint into white wet paint. And 
so I'm trying to I'm trying to be really careful not to um, now I can brush down here twice because there's no wet white stuff down there likewise down here there's no way too dark. It, it's hard to get it light enough when you're just using water. that again or it'll just as I said it'll just blossom. Are we still here? Yep, yeah, okay we are. Alright so the, as you can see the canvas is absolute um, wet acrylic soup so I have to let that dry for a minute. which I can do if I go back to drawing with pencils, right? I can, it's okay to, to draw pencils. There's a hose anyway. That I really like, I really like the hose. As you might imagine, I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about for details such as getting each pylon in exactly the right location. Right? That doesn't that that doesn't matter. It's more important to me that they be placed in a visually appropriate location. Than, than that they be literal, right? That's that's not something I, I need to focus on. I want, I'm going to try to, of course, to capture the essence of what the scene looks like, which means I will be I'll have things more or less in the right place. I'm sure that makes sense to you. Never mind. I won't explain that anymore. Another way to describe my technique is I start out very messy, of course, in fact, <laughs> with an utterly and complete abstract painting, so it's hard to get any messier than that. Um, I start drawing very loosely and little by little by little. Um, my drawing, each, each time I do the drawing, it gets a little more accurate. And of course, I'm, I'm looking at the subject matter, you know, for the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time, and so forth. So I'm, I'm gaining more information every time I look up at it. And that's why it gets more accurate. It's like, oh, who put that, who put that bucket there? Who put that window there? Who put, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that will, that will proceed throughout almost the entire painting. I'm already I'm happy to say it's already beginning to look uh, like the scene in front of me. I'd venture to say that even anybody who's familiar with Ocracoke Island um, wouldn't have any trouble 
they remember the name of it, they, they would say, oh yeah, that's Smack Nally. Smack Nally is the name of the, the pub, the restaurant, the bar, whatever it is here. so many details literally every time I look up I see something new that I hadn't ever noticed before and what you're seeing of course is my approach to to drawing uh, complex subject matter like this is is what you see here don't sit around and analyze carefully and you know, mentally sort of everything lined up no just jump in completely jump in the deep end and just start drawing like like a crazy man or a crazy woman and um and then make corrections correction 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 corrections and additions just start drawing just start the heck drawing and and um make corrections as you go right there's a propane tank down here who the thunk? Who put that? <laughs> when did that show up? <laughs> and of course, as you know, I'm by no means obligated to include everything, like propane tanks. Now, let me quickly say, I say this often. So as an artist, you, you're not obligated to include everything. But, but, I wouldn't, I would not recommend taking the approach. Well, leave things out if they're too hard for you to draw. Now, I guess that's a prudent. But the challenge there is, oh. I need to get better at drawing stuff. And, and if you're out here doing a plein air painting, this is the moment to get better at drawing stuff. So I, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you as if you want to be a better artist than you are, okay? That, that's kind of the assumption. So if that's the case, no, don't, don't take stuff out because, eh, that's too hard. No, 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 no. That's not why you take stuff out. You take stuff out because of artistic, aesthetic reasons. All right, I'm sounding like a grumpy school teacher, so I'll just change that subject. Let's get on, let's get on to something else. <laughs> More people back here sitting around tables. Rocks down here, I haven't done much with those yet. fishing boats, masts, and rigging. Just a, a forest of mast and rigging up there. Oh good, I have one of these here. A, a hardware store tool, not a... I have, believe me, I have plenty of uh, pallet knives back, back Home. I have a couple here with me, but that's not what I want right now. Right, right now I want one of these a blunt. I said that with plenty of b, didn't I? A blunt. <laughs> Let the lips flap. I want a blunt power knife. I said just the other day, I don't I don't very often use use a towel knife in the acrylic phase, acrylic stage. But I did the other day, and here I am doing it again two days later. So maybe I use it more than I think I do. I don't know.
right, that's, that's enough of that. Now, what next? Um, I, I'm going to do more drawing. Generally speaking, by the way, when a subject matter is more complex, and uh, this subject matter is, I would say it's extremely complex, um, I tend to stay in the acrylic realm uh, longer. I don't go to oil. I, I work out more issues. There's so much. Here, let me show you again, those of you who just joined me in the last several minutes, perhaps. Um, how's that look? Yeah, that's what I'm painting. Zoom in a little bit from there, of course. Maybe something like that. All right? That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to capture. All right, I'm going to pick up some slightly smaller brushes. So I've drawn this essentially, essentially four times. Orange, red, pencil, white, pencil. Oh, I've drawn it five times. So this next, go around this next draw, will be my sixth drawing. Does that make sense? And, and Again, my approach to when I'm painting a complex subject matter like this is don't sit around with your, with your fingers on your chin, thinking, analyzing, thinking, like, man, how am I going to start? At least for me, it's, no, just dive the heck into the deep end of the pool. Just start drawing like, again, like a crazy man, woman. I draw like a crazy man. You can draw like a crazy woman if you want. <laughs> And just and then make make constant corrections, right? So this is my sixth number six drawing. So implied there is very obviously that once you do a drawing, once you draw a line, you don't depend on it, you don't count on it, you don't believe it, you don't trust it, right? That's your, your first line is just your first line. You're, I'm going to go through, so, and I'll, this this painting, this subject matter will be drawn, um, I would say at least another five times before the painting is finished. So I've, this is my six, and so there'll probably be a, roughly 10, 11, maybe 12 different drawings by the time I'm done. Each one, hopefully, each one getting slightly more accurate, precise, and detailed than the one before. Thus, the, the, the smaller brushes that I'm using right now. And generally, um, I did do some brown a little while ago, which is quite, quite unusual. Usually, um, I um, I want to draw in color because, again, all things being equal, the human eye generally, all things being equal, and many times things are not equal. In other words, sometimes, many times, there are extenuating issues, not circumstances, but extenuating issues, but barring that, generally speaking, we, the human eye, would rather see yes color as opposed to no color. That is to say, we'd rather see more color than less. So uh, that's part of the reason why I did, why I did my first drawing in orange and did my second one in red, rather than like a traditional black outline. Right. And now I'm drawing it once again, this time in blue. Um, let me answer a question, a possible question. Obviously, my, my drawings are very fast and loose, and in this case, colorful. How do I know which of these marks are going to end up being 
visible, seeable, are going to be discernible at the end of the painting process? And the answer is, I don't. No, 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 I don't at all. Um, therefore, <laughs> it behooves me. <laughs> Do you like to be behooved? <laughs> <It'd> be <laughs> when was the last time you were behooved? Anyway, anyway, it behooves me. It's to my advantage. Uh, uh, I don't worry about what's going to be visible or not visible. It's, it's simply my job to uh, make all of my marks attractive. So that's part of the reason. So they're in blue, because blue is attractive. See, brown, gray, black, mm, not so much. Does that make sense? And of course, I, I move my, my hands, my brushes, with a certain panache, a certain bravura, <laughs> bravado, bravura. Anyway, a certain looseness, spontaneity, boldness, and so on and so forth. Um, because I don't know if that mark is going to be visible. Uh, so I just make sure that I make it a, an attractive mark. Hope that's making sense to you. I am going to stick with the, uh, the dark ultramarine blue uh, umbrellas up here. It, it would not be uncommon for me at all to, to change them to, say, red umbrellas or some such thing, green. But uh, in this particular painting, as I look at the scene over to my left, I go, ah, no, blue, perfectly fine. Blue's good. And, of course, then it makes it just a little bit more um, accurate, believable to the, to the locals. You know, anybody who's fa familiar with this restaurant called Smack Nally's. <laughs> um, actually, you know, they'll go, oh yeah, that's right, that, that place has blue umbrellas, doesn't it? Right? It's not that likely that anybody will notice or remember because people generally don't remember those kind of details but anyway especially because last year the umbrellas might have been red right umbrellas don't last not like a permanent characteristic of this restaurant all right i ramble don't i i really really commence to rambling <laughs> So that was drawing number six. Um, if I had time to wait, which I'm not sure that I do, I, mean, I would love for this to dry. Oh, there's a great big clob of white acrylic. That would have taken for an hour to dry. Um, same thing here. Um, I would love for this to dry. I would do some glazes, some probably some yellow, orange, warm sunlight color over the whole thing. And uh, and then come in with more white, maybe perhaps my last layer of white. I my last layer of acrylic is always uh, white. Let me answer the question, how do I know when it's time? So I'm trying to do, this, 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 what I just said, I'm trying to do the sunlight, warm sunlight color right now on, on top of, um, everything's wet. <laughs> how do I know when it's time to move on? I'm glad you asked, let me answer that question. The answer is, move on to oil that is I, I'm assuming most of you are familiar with my work all my paintings start like this uh, they're acrylic underneath layers and layers of transparent acrylic and then finishing up in oil and how do I know when it's time okay the answer is when my drawing is close or maybe a little more expressively I would say when my drawing is pretty darn close to accurate to real to, to realistic precise okay I'm drawing I don't like I don't like to move on 
if I've still got areas of the painting that are like, eh, I'm not sure where that goes. Nope. So when the drawing is when the drawing is close, when the color is close, and when the values are close. Okay, so that's the answers to that question. Now what I just did right there with the big brush doing glazes, I don't, I don't call that personally. I don't call that a drawing layer. That's glazing, sort of filling, coloring in the lines, even if you will. So I don't, I don't call that drawing. Uh, so I, the time be, the, before that was blue, that was drawing number six. I'm going back to white again. I, is this my third? I've lost count now. Is this my third go around? Um, I'm going to find a real palette knife here. Yep. This, I believe, is my third layer of white. Anyway, this is draw, and, and I am going to do white again. And this might be my last acrylic layer. I won't know until it's finished and I stand back so to speak and look at it and say ah no I need to do more color whatever but this might be because I always finish with white so this is just in case you're counting I I happen to have been counting because let's talk about it a minute but this happens to be um, drawing number seven Okay, so once again, more precision, more accuracy, more information. I'm not just, you know, slavishly copying what's already here. I'm looking very much at my reference. Like there's, there's some kind of hatch, it looks like to me, on the deck of this boat right there. I hadn't even noticed it before now. Um, so this is, again, drawing layer number seven and it, this might be I'm guessing that it probably will be my final acrylic layer and uh, it's partly because I'm, I'm definitely in in hurry up mode on this painting this we're having a sale uh, a pop-up gallery front porch sale me and the other six artists who are here on the island this week we're having a sale tomorrow evening so I would like to have at least two complete oil paintings and then besides that um, five or six or seven little watercolor pen ink and watercolor sketches right so I'm I'm under a fair amount of time crunch. By the way, let me mention again, I'm so sorry, I do not have my iPad out here. So I appreciate you, all you guys leaving chat comments. Unfortunately, I won't read them. I do promise I will go back and read them because I enjoy reading what people have said. Um, Sorry, I can't, I can't read your chats right now. But you can see, by the way, that I'm, how much, you can see how much I've slowed down in my drawing, right? Each, each drawing, again, that, that should be instructive for some of you. If you're, if you're an early journey painter, right? do, do take note of that. Um, the, the key concept is once you've put down a mark in a drawing, don't trust it. Don't rely it. Don't 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 put your weight down on it. Don't assume that it's correct. Assume that it's not correct. In fact, in fact, all right. Um, but you can see I'm I'm just my the way my hands are moving is considerably different than it was just a, just a short time ago when I was slapping stuff down like a, like a house of fire it's <laughs> some some people say but uh, lo and behold as I look at the canvas it's like my goodness it, it, it honestly is I'm, I'm not kidding it almost uh, is like magic to me um, it's a, it's like a surprise it's always like a mild surprise when the canvas starts to uh, 
reflect the the reality, the image to my to my left in this case over there. It always is a little bit of a surprise. Like, well, you look at there. It's starting. It's actually starting to look like it because it doesn't feel to me like I have arm wrestled the thing, the painting into submission, like the way a, the way a hyper realist or a photo realist would. It doesn't feel that way at all. There's been all kinds of room for serendipitous, accidental things to happen at every stage of the process. So that when it actually does start looking like something, it's like, huh, that's, who, who put that there? How did that happen? And I'm not kidding. It really, it always does feel like that to me because I'm not operating in hyper control. We've had that conversation so many times. I don't want to repeat you, bore you, but hello. Hey. Let's go grab my bike. It's right over here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Hope I didn't spatter any paint on it. Oh, well, I hope no you, charge. No I hope charge. You did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do uh, sometimes indulge in the fun of photorealistic painting or hyper-realistic or very realistic, whatever. It, it, it is indeed fun for me. I, I'm, I'm one of those crazy people, either you're like me or you're not. I like jigsaw puzzles. Jig, jigs, are they hard? Well, it depends what you mean by hard. If you're like, if you're like in a hurry, then yeah, a jigsaw puzzle is hard to get done in a hurry, but no, I, we don't do them because they're hard. We do it because it's fun, but it takes time. And that's that's the way I feel about realistic painting. It's not hard, it just takes time. And uh, it, it's like, for me, it's like operating on a different side of my brain than what I'm doing here. Um, and of course, many, many fine artists do fine, 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 super realistic stuff and get paid well for it, and win competitions, and so on and so forth. I wouldn't say they're the majority by any means, but there, there are certainly no shortage of artists who do very realistic stuff. And um, here's one of the reasons I prefer abstract realism, which is the term that I use. I stole from um, David LaFell, big dog artist. I don't know if he's somewhere. Um, abstract realism. The reason I prefer it is because, well, thank you. When you do realism, every darn stroke when on the finished painting is one that you put there on purpose. And indeed, the, the effect can be dazzling. The effect can be spectacular. But I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the line and say yeah, but the effect is never quite. I'm gonna use a spooky word. Is never quite transcendent because every stroke came out of your head. You planned every single stroke, so there's no accidents. So there's no again using that spooky word. There's no transcendent things on the canvas because everything's done on purpose. I like when I I like using a. Um, a comparison or an analogy here to, to music. Um, I'm a fairly serious musician. I, I practice pretty much every day, several instruments. So I, I approach music, you know, the way, I, the, like a, as a musician would. And every musician in every concert, so to speak, hopes that the concert is going to reach or achieve a transcendent place. The fact is, most concerts do not. In fact, if I can make a comparison here, um, I, uh, super realism in, in painting might be compared to the classical, hang on you classical musicians, no, no, I'm going to back up, hang on. But it might be compared to um, a classical music a classical concert in which the co conductor, and this is key, in which the conductor is a control freak. So there's some conductors that just rehearse the heck out of everything. They want every note placed perfectly, accurately, and so on and so on and so forth. Um, that's a, a certain kind of conductor. 
Some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's right. Um, but they rehearse, 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 rehearse. And they want, what they want is precision and accuracy and fidelity to what's on the page, so to speak. Okay. Then there are other kind of conductors, like I will pick on, for instance, the Leonard Bernstein. You know, my age is showing here. He's been gone for 20 years. But Leonard Bernstein, who, when he gets up in the podium to conduct a live the New York Symphony, he's not after precision. He allows space in my opinion, for transcendent experiences, accidents to happen, happy accidents. And, and, and indeed, he conducts live. That is to say, he's not just up there waving his arms. He's actually conducting some, you know, musicians won't understand what I'm talking about. But anyway, that's all right. Um, he's actually literally playing the orchestra in real time. And those are the good or those are the good orchestras and those are the good conductors. And in those concerts, transcendent things. Let me, let me switch from classical to I, I think in particular one Dave. Good grief, the boss. Well, this uh, uh, um, I'll come back to me. You know who the boss is. I just watching one of their concerts several years ago on TV. Late in the concert. The, the, the place went into a transcendent place. In other words, the musicians were off book, off note, off notation. They were not just playing what they rehearsed. They went beyond. And everybody in the place felt the magic. It really is a very spiritual experience, and the band included. And the whole audience stands there with their eyes closed and their hands held up. They're not worshiping the band. They are reveling in a transcendent moment. All right, that's what I prefer in my painting, is uh, not everything all rehearsed, but slap down some accidents and see what happens. Sometimes transcendent moments. All right, I am going to go to the car, but before I do, I'm going to um, you guys look at my subject matter again. And I'm going to take yet another picture because, dang, the light is pretty gorgeous right now. Whoops. Come on, come on, come on. Whoops, I'm afraid my on, emergency here. I didn't realize that this... That this... Uh, phone is just about dead. Okay, give me just a minute. I can take another picture. Come on. Okay, another picture with this light. There we go. Good enough. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, end this broadcast right here. Now, when I come back, I'm going to decide whether I'm going to... Uh, proceed to pick to oils right here or take it back to my to the cottage to the house where we're staying and uh, continue there so I don't know which it'll be we'll all find out together In the meantime thanks for watching appreciate it I'll look forward to reading your chats when I get back to my iPad and that'll be good thanks for watching